So how does a six-year-old phone that looks like it was released nine years ago compare to Apple's latest and greatest that was released a few months ago? Well, let's find out in this video. Welcome back to another video, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here, where I make content around tech, accessories, and my experience with it to try to help you out. In this video, you've heard that right, I'm comparing a six-year-old phone, the iPhone SE first generation, to Apple's latest and greatest, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which was released a few months ago. So obviously I'm not comparing these to determine which one's better because we all know obviously the iPhone 13 Pro Max is better than the iPhone SE. But what I do want to compare and share with you is how far we've truly come in the world of tech. So this video is mostly going to be hardware based because the software is pretty much the same. Believe it or not, the iPhone SE runs the same iOS as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which just goes to show how truly powerful and efficient Apple's processors are. Before we get started, definitely leave a like below to let me know that you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see a video about me using this iPhone SE in 2022, definitely let me know by subscribing to the channel so you don't miss it when it drops. Alright, now, let's get into it. So I want to first talk about the front of these phones. So obviously, as you can see, the front of both these phones differ quite significantly. On the iPhone SE, there's a chin and a forehead, pretty big ones, and the forehead has a few sensors, the earpiece, and a front-facing camera, which is completely crap, especially compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And on the chin of the iPhone SE, we have the home button, the iconic, classic home button that the iPhone started with. And between those two huge bezels, we have an LCD less than 720p display. Which, I mean, it's it's not bad. I mean, you know, a screen this size, you're not gonna be, you know, editing photos or looking at, you know, 4K content for the sake of actually watching 4K content. But, you know, for everyday use, it's okay. It's good. It gets the job done. Obviously, with this 4-inch display, you don't see as much content in one frame as you do with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Which brings me to the iPhone 13 Pro Max's front. So the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch OLED display which is beautiful because it is 1440p so if you do want to watch really high quality videos or if you want to edit photos or edit even maybe videos on your iPhone 13 Pro Max you can definitely do that. The display on the iPhone 13 Pro Max is just wonderful it's probably perfect it gets very bright in sunlight and bright situations in general and you don't have to worry about not being able to see anything in bright situations. It's truly a wonderful display and almost too good of a display because I mean it attracts you to using the phone so much as if we don't use our phones enough already. So now to compare the display on the iPhone SE with the display on the iPhone 13 Pro Max you can see there's a huge huge contrast especially in brightness, colors, viewing angles and also in overall color accuracy. And the last difference I want to mention about the iPhone 13 Pro Max's display comparing to the iPhone SE's display is the aspect ratios. So the aspect ratio on the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio, which means that you know it's a taller display so you can see more content basically is what that means. And videos while watching on YouTube and stuff will be stretched out a little bit more and you won't have the top and bottom black bars that you'll have on the iPhone SE because the aspect ratio on the iPhone SE is a traditional classic 16 by 9 aspect ratio so you will have those black bars and it will still be widescreen but it won't look as good as the iPhone 13 Pro Max obviously. I wonder how many times I've said obviously already. Anyways, moving on to the back of these phones, we can see that the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a lot cleaner than the iPhone SE. Which is not to say that the iPhone SE looks bad by any means. I actually personally love this design of the iPhone SE. I think it looks very classy. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who does. So if you also love this design, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Looking at the back of these phones, we can see that there are quite a few similarities. Starting with the Apple logo. The Apple logo is something that we have in common between these two phones on the back. And as for other commonalities, we can move over to the camera modules, where both of them have a primary camera, a microphone, and a two-tone flash. But that is actually where the similarities end between the two of these backs. So let's talk about the differences. One major difference between the iPhone SE and the iPhone 13 Pro Max on the back is that on the iPhone SE, we can see that it says iPhone, it says the SE badge, and below all that, it has the FCC markings. Whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you have absolutely no text, making it look extremely clean, especially compared to the iPhone SE. Now another difference between the iPhone SE and the iPhone 13 Pro Max is that the iPhone 13 Pro Max is entirely made out of glass on the back. It's just frosted so it feels better and it looks better, and there are not as many fingerprints. 
whereas on the iPhone SE, you can see that it's a combination of glass and metal, but where there is glass, it's not frosted like it is on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And obviously with the inclusion of metal on their iPhone SE, there was no wireless charging which there is on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So that's another difference on the back of these two phones, the build quality, and the final difference is the camera modules, like I mentioned earlier. So the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a primary camera, and so does the iPhone SE, but what the iPhone SE does not have is a ultra wide angle camera and a telephoto camera, both of which the iPhone 13 Pro Max does have. Also, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a LiDAR sensor, which you can use for depth mapping and better portrait photos in general. As for the difference in camera performance between these both phones, Obviously, you can see that the iPhone 13 Pro Max is on top. It takes a lot better photos than the iPhone SE. However, that is not to say that the iPhone SE takes bad photos, even in 2022. Like you can see, these two photos in good lighting are not that bad. So you can still get away with using the iPhone SE for shots that aren't meant to be professionally used. As for video performance, again, the iPhone 13 Pro Max definitely beats out the iPhone SE, where it has the advantage of two additional lenses, so even more information than just one lens, and sensor shift stabilization, which the iPhone SE does not have. It, does, it actually doesn't have any stabilization, it just has electronic stabilization. And this year with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, Apple has introduced ProRes Video which is basically higher quality video. But again, for casual video shooting, the iPhone SE still is not bad compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And obviously, if you had to choose between these two, I would definitely choose this one. But if I only had this one, I wouldn't be too disappointed. And if we move over to the front-facing camera, we can definitely see that there is a very big difference between the quality and the performance of these cameras. First and foremost, the iPhone 13 Pro Max can shoot in 4K with the front-facing camera, whereas the iPhone SE caps out at 720p. Because the iPhone SE has like a 1.2 megapixel camera, which is just ridiculous, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 12 megapixel camera on the front. So those are the differences between the backs of both these phones. Now let's move on to the sides. And the sides of both these phones use different materials to make. So on the iPhone SE, we have aluminum with chamfered edges, which looks so good. And on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we have stainless steel sides, which also looks pretty good, but it attracts a lot of fingerprints. So starting off with the similarities on the right side of both these phones, we can see the antenna lines on uh, the top and the bottom of both phones, and that's pretty much where the similarities end. So moving on to the differences, on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we have a power button, and there should be a 5G millimeter wave antenna as well. But here in Canada, we don't have millimeter wave, so we don't have the antenna. And on the iPhone SE, there is our SIM card slot on the right side. Moving on to the left side, starting off with similarities, we have those antennas on the top and the bottom of the phone. And we also have the mute switch, which has been on the iPhone since day one, as well as the placement of the volume buttons. But, but by the way, can I just say that I love the way that the iPhone SE handled the volume button design. I love how Apple used their machines to create the plus and minus sign on each of the volume buttons to indicate which one is volume down and to indicate which one is volume up. I also love the rounded buttons taking up less space. Whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we unfortunately don't get that. We get the regular, you know, standard pill-shaped button for volume up and volume down. And we also don't get the laser etched plus and minus signs on each button. I wish they could bring it back, but anyways, that's where the similarities end. And the difference here is the SIM card ejector is moved from the right side on the iPhone SE to the left side on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So those are the similarities and differences on the sides of both these phones. Now let's move on to the top. So on the top of both these phones, there is actually no similarities. The iPhone SE has the power button on the top and no antenna bands, whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, all we have is an antenna band. Now moving on to the bottom, we have the lightning port in the middle, the microphone on the left side, and the speaker on the right side. What is that you see there on, beside the microphone on the iPhone SE? Is that, a, is that a headphone jack? Why, yes it is. That is the beloved and very well missed headphone jack on the iPhone SE, whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, there is no such thing. Instead, where the headphone jack would have been is an antenna band, and that is the bottom of the iPhone SE versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So again, this was just a quick little video comparing technology in 2016 slash 2013 because this design is actually the iPhone 5S's design, which was released in 2013, to 2021 slash 2022. It's just a fun little quick video to compare both of these. Again, if you want to see what it's like to use a six-year-old phone, the iPhone SE, in 2022, 
definitely let me know by subscribing down below and leave a comment down below letting me know what you think I should cover. As for this video, if you enjoyed, definitely leave a like and subscribe to see more. And share this video with your friends and family if you think they'd enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye.